education department of steam education so uh, regarding this webinar that has been going on from 8th may 2021 um, is 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 the sixth webinar that uh, is going to happen today so the purpose of this webinar is to reach out to the larger community not only in nepal uh, across the world as well and our main purpose is to um, share our ideas knowledge and um, educational programs and the developments that have been going on in our Kathmandu University through us as well as through our uh, students who are doing their different uh, programs in our same university. So uh, according to this purpose today, we have actually got three presenters. Uh, number one, Paras Hamal Thakuri, who is doing his MA in Mathematics Education. Uh, next, uh, Durga Pandey Parajuli. She is doing one year MA in STEM Education. And uh, another one is Purna Shrestha, who is doing his MPhil in STEM Education. And uh, before I invite uh, the um, uh, designated person for the opening uh, remarks, I would like to inform all the, um, the participants as well as the presenters that each presenter will have 30 minutes of their sharing and 10 minutes for question and answer. So as soon as the um, presenter finishes his or her presentation, I would uh, request all the participants to write their questions in the chat box so that I will read out and Accordingly, I will ask the question or transfer the question to the presenter. So, uh, now to begin with, I first of all would like to invite uh, Associate Professor Susan Chitragar, who is Associate Dean of School of Arts in Kathmandu University School of Education. He will be giving uh, his opening remarks on how arts education can be helpful in our day-to-day -day life activities. So, uh, Susan, sir, uh, please, uh, you may go ahead. Uh, thank you, Susan, sir, I can see you. Uh, namaste, uh, I'm Susan Chitrakar, uh, uh, and um, I'm associate professor at the Department of Art and Design at Kathmandu University. And as a Chitrakar also, I have been an artist, trained as an artist also. So art has always been part of my profession and my passion also. And I would like to thank uh, Professor Dr. Balsanar Luitel, Indramani Sir, Vinod Pante Sir, and the STEAM, uh, Department of STEAM Education for this opportunity. I'm very humbled. Uh, Professor Luitel asked me to share about the importance of art in our life and how it correlates with the education. So the the importance of art and why it's the important why what's art and why it's important in our learning process is primarily what will be what i'll be sharing about today if i have to tell about art uh, the first experience that i get to learn about art was in my school days but those days the art was just a small subject as taught as a extracurriculum activities you know i was taught science math social studies english nepal and so on so forth but those courses were taught as independent courses and art was taught as just as ECA, the extracurricular activities. So I, I feel when all subjects are taught independently, there becomes no interdisciplinary interaction with itself. You know? So I think the, the problem with my education when I got 30 years back was the, all of the subjects were segregated. So there was more or less no space for questioning no space for innovation also. So I feel I was kind of confined with my whole learning process because the subjects were very much of like a taught independent. So if you ask me what is trigonometry or even if you ask me certain topics on maths or science or general papers, I can't relate to those things. It has become so unrelatable. You know? So I feel in schools, in the early childhood development, the ritual of education starts with A for apple. You know? But we never ask a student, a child, 
what is the taste of an apple whether he or she does likes the taste of an apple what he feels what he smells it you know so our education system has become very linguistic and we have paralyzed our non-linguistic faculty that we have you know. but if you look we have those five senses and we call these senses our input input faculties you know. that's where our cognitive fun that's the fundamental of our cognitions and within the art sectors you know i feel like if you if if i ask anyone of you what is art then you might want to say no i don't know what art is i don't understand art you know the problem starts with if we talk about art the problem starts with the art fraternity itself because art has been put in museums or a slick gallery and it is bought by rich people and appreciated by elites but whereas art is not an object art is a process and product so product is an artwork a painting a sculpture or a film or a poetry or a music piece those are the products they are produced by the the creative individuals or artists or producer or filmmakers but art is also about the process and the process is about like what we learn what we see and what we feel and what we understand things around us so in my opinion art is not just as a product as as of a painting or sculpture only but it's all about the contemplating with our sensibilities you know? so if i have to like if uh, we are we are gifted with this kind of like attitude we are gifted with this five senses that we that's how we understand our surroundings you know? and if i uh, give an example of the uh, the five senses that's our basic instinct and that's how we appreciate art also and art is also basic instinct you know if we think of this five senses five senses are for also for it's not only the input the input faculties but it's also the means to appreciation you know? how we appreciate our surroundings is through our five senses animal kingdom also had the sense of appreciation the aesthetic appreciation if we if we say in precisely you know? but the problem is their appreciation process is confined with the mating seasons only a peacock dance to attract peahen you know, of frog croaks to attract the attention of another frog a flower attracts bees and butterflies to spread pollen you know. but in human kind the appreciation is not only confined within this mating season only it is part of our everyday life and if i give an example uh, you would understand how we are proceeding because we practice this every day it's food we hear somebody cooking in the kitchen we hear that sound you know we smell the aroma of the food we see the food on our plate we appreciate the food and we touch and feel the texture and we eat and taste the food if you don't like the aroma if you don't see the food as very attractive on a plate if you don't like the texture if you don't like the taste you may not want to eat the food also but our body doesn't need those kind of aesthetics for the nutrition you know? because our body needs nutrition but it doesn't need that aesthetics to appreciate but because you are we are human being we have this unique capability to appreciate what we what's around us so that's for me art is that process of appreciating you know? appreciating beauty art is not about just like painting drawing or creating some sculptures you know. art is a faculty art is a basic instinct that we have within us so if somebody asks you what art is i think from today you should say that art is what i appreciate around me you, know. you appreciate something you appreciate beauty it's it's that's subjective explorations that we have around us so uh so in in um in the stem education system is not stem sorry stem education system the focus was the innovation and though the, it was a focus on innovation it missed the very elements that were crucial for the innovation it missed design thinking and creativity but those design thinking and creativity are the process that can be ignited through the practice of art only the making of art only the creation of art only you know. so so this kind of like artistic experiences help a learner to understand you know 
to understand the learner from the memories, the judgment, evaluation, even problem solving, comprehension, and even language production. So several scientists have done some uh, scientific studies have shown in the Neuro Education Summit at uh, John Hopkins University in 2009. You know, it says that sustained training in music, dance, and arts strengthen the brain's attention system, you know, which in turn may improve cognitive cognition more generally. You know. So that, that means that our cognition directly plays roles in different subjects also. But the faculty that we have, those five senses, uh, how we perceive in a linguistic and non-linguistic manner is a product of art only. But if we see art as a subject to be taught at school, or if we see art as a subject of a gallery or a museum or a distant realm, you know, then I think we are disconnecting ourselves with what we have, the attention or uh, the capacity that we have within ourselves. You know. So bringing art into STEAM is not only to make young learners to, it's, it's, not, it's not to make a young learners and artists. You know. It's to like sustain their inborn capacity to design thinking and creativity. And art connects everything that we have around us. It's the basic instinct of our learning process. That's why STEAM education system is answer to all these problems, I guess. And I think a STEAM education system integrated with this integrated learning teaching methodology or pedagogies, you know, that would bring a new generation uh, to produce, that would bring us to produce the new generation with inquisitive mind, innovative mind, and successful generation, you know. So, um, I think money, sir, gave me around five minutes. Am I within five minutes or am I? <laughs> it's, it's fine. Please, please go. Yeah. I'm sorry. It doesn't matter uh, if yeah. it crossed that time also. No, we are I, enjoying I, a lot. No, I, I think I think I, I have uh, more of a dismiss to say, you know, because uh, within, within, within this uh, STEAM education system also, so one has to understand that the teaching learning process within the different subjects you know we have to take art as a tools to make them understand other courses so and for us since art was taught as a separate subject you know, so within those segregated domains we have misunderstood and we have not understood the interdisciplinarity of different domains so i feel uh, i request you all to understand that art is not the distant domain. Art is within us. Art is for us. Art is, that's what we live by and what we live for. So if somebody asks you, okay, what is art? Oh, I don't know art isn't the correct answer. You may not produce a painting, you may not produce a sculpture, but you have that capacity for the aesthetic appreciation. And that's where we start by igniting our senses and our sensibilities. You know? And that will help us to understand other subjects better also. Yeah, thank you. That's all I have to say in the money, sir. And thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. I'm actually overwhelmed the way you express your ideas and concepts about the about us education, whether I can get all the things that you had <laughs> today uh, told um, or not, I don't know. But uh, to some extent, what I understood is that uh, arts education is not uh, confined to that uh, sort kind of sort, sort kind of making pictures or only that uh, painting something like that. It is uh, all about uh, design thinking, uh, critical thinking, and creative thinking. Yes, I agree with you, sir. That um, uh, being a teacher and being an educator, being a student uh, working in the field of education, we should always acknowledge. Uh, what occur, uh, actually our five senses direct us to do something in our life. And for that, art education can, can stimulate our five senses to create something that actually represents the whole education. Thank you very much, sir. I am humbled to have you today here. Thank you very much. So I want to make us a small correction that last time I think I might have told that he is from School of Education. Actually, he's uh, working as an associate dean uh, in uh, School of Arts, Kathmandu University. Now, the first presenter for today is uh, Parasamal Thakuri. 
So, Parasar, if you are there, please share your slides and start your presentation. Namaste to all. Introduce, introducing myself, I am Paras Amal Thakuri. I made mathematics for same student of Kathmandu University School of Education. Professionally, I am a mathematics teacher. Today, I am sharing my some insight about art integration in mathematics teaching and learning. Before starting, I like to pause here and like to give special thanks to Kathmandu University for this platform, to our host Indra sir, Netra sir, and Madan Nizal sir for assisting me, and to all participants. The outlines of my presentation goes like this. Firstly, I'll be talking about my experience of learning and teaching along with experience in KO in brief. Secondly, why art integration? Likewise, beauty in mathematical pattern, table of numbers with pattern. Next, line art, wrongly for different geometrical shape, geometry on Thanga sketch, mandala with circle and regular polygons. And finally, automatic and geometric progression through mandala. When I call back to my school life and remember the way teacher taught, my learning mathematics was almost instrumental. I learned in a monotonous lecture-based method. In the beginning phase of my teaching, roughly saying, I taught as an untrained and inexperienced teacher is the way I learned. I simply followed the traditional conventional method of teaching mathematics. But in the recent time, after I joined Kathmandu University, I got to explore different pedagogical approaches like collaborative learning, Brunner's CPR model, ethnomathematics, and so on. This encouraged me to make teaching and learning contextualized. Now I feel capable of continuing to grow as a learner, a teacher, an educator, and a researcher with a transformative sensibility. My perfect uh, perception about teaching and learning totally got sense. Moving to the next slide. Art integration. It is an approach where students construct and demonstrate understanding through an art form. The objectives of learning art integration is to make learning joyful and engaging for them, which encourage children to be aware of environment through keen observation and unhinder exploration. Bookish knowledge, bookish studies, root memorization are not much here. They will show their eagerness to learn and discover concept of mathematics that we have models, patterns, different shapes, scales, where you can make them aware of interdisciplinary connection. They can present a particular thing in different ways, promote their teamwork, which encourage to appreciate each other and apply the aesthetic skills in detail day activities. Okay, uh, look at the figure of, of that triangle. I have a question for you. Uh, can you tell me if there was a fourth figure, how many triangles would be there? Okay, Indramani sir, I request you to give response of them because chat is not visible here. Okay, okay. If there, so okay. Fourth figure, can you tell here me if there was a fourth figure, how many triangles would be there? Yeah, yeah in the first, first one, yeah. How many yeah. triangles? Okay, I will say Is here. Is there any response? Oh, okay, 15, Ravina Marzan, 15. Other, other, other responses? Okay. Anyone, please? Let's try. 16, 1, 4, 9, dot, 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 dot. 16. Okay. Uh, exactly, exactly, 16, sir, 16. There is no 16. number, okay, there is no number, nothing given to you. How did you work on that? Can you tell how did you work on that? Yeah, one response is there, one, four, nine, dot, 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 dot. Okay, how did they work on that? Any response, sir? 
No response. There is no number. Nothing given here. Pattern. 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 This is a pattern. Yes, pattern. Oh, okay, okay. Exactly pattern the word. Exactly, exactly, sir. Exactly the word I was looking for. No number. Nothing given. But also, we work on that. That is the okay. pattern. Exactly the word I was looking for. From pattern, oh, you found out what number the answer going to be. Can you see the in intrinsic relation between pattern with we with which we relate? art and with math throughout the development of different culture patterns and prints with perfect shape with straight line circle became pinnacle art of beauty so early civilization were drawn to be this pattern and to them they represent perfection okay there is another very interesting activity table of number as a beautiful pattern okay here yeah, I am going to make it into the work of art. What you need to do is we need to draw a circle and make 10 points starting from 0 to 9. First, I like to start with the two times table. Two times table, can you see there? Two, four, six, eight, zero, something is written. Okay. Four, okay, two times one is two, two times two is four, two times three is six, two times four is eight, two times five is ten. Everybody, you know that. And you will look only the number in one place uh, and you will connect them. If you do this for all the table from one to nine and you are sure to have a surprise. When you look on the right side, you can say which two patterns are same. Okay, is there any response, sir? There on the right, they can, participants are supposed to see the figure. Okay, is there any pattern similar of any number, multiplication pattern? Okay, any response? I'm, I'm looking, looking here. Okay. So any pattern two? No response here. I think you can move ahead. Okay, if you look on that, one and nine share the same polygon shape, three and seven, likewise four and six share the same polygon shape. I was so thrilled when I saw it for the first time. Okay. Uh, learners are familiar with the envelope, invitation card, mehindi. I don't know why some school don't allow mehindi. We can encourage them to notice the broader out of it. Then teach them different types of lines, different types of art associated with it. These things they already know, so it will be easy for them to connect. Just the thing is that they may not know the math behind it. Okay. We all know about Rongoli, yeah? Okay, we can go to our classroom by making different design of Rongoli with different geometrical shape like triangle, circle, square, cylinder, and so on. Uh, student uh, will so eager to learn is they are familiar with Rongoli. Uh, we can give them to color symmetrically and to decorate classroom. Such things encourage inclusive practice of respect, care, empathy and compassion. Uh, we can give them wrongly making competition at the time of the hour. It encourages the creativity of the learner. Likewise, they will learn different geometrical shapes. Uh, I observed that uh, the master painting Thangka was highly uh, geometric. Arms, legs, eyes, nostrils, ears, and various ritual implements are laid out on a symmetric grid of angles and intersecting lines. That was the main reason it used to look so perfect on the Thangka art. What I observed and felt is different kinds of triangles, angles, quadrilaterals, curve, line segments, semicircle, etc. found on Thangka art can be interlinked to our mathematics education. Okay, you can see on the diagram there where I have tried to connect, make some geometrical shapes. Okay, if you see on the here one uh, triangle, PQR triangle, then uh, if we measure that all, then it forms an equilateral triangle that the, all the sides of that triangle will be equal. And if you go on to the down triangle, UMN, then UM, here I have measured, I, uh, I made it by myself. Okay, UM is seven centimeter, UN is seven centimeter, UN is eight centimeter on that case. And here the two sides, UM and UN are equal and it represents the isolated triangle. 
likewise c o b uh, makes an angle of 180 degree we can we can give the insight of straight line okay likewise uh, Acute angle, obtuse angle, right angle can be taught with this thangka art. In this way, we can teach different types of triangles, angles, acute angles, all these things. Dep it depends on how far we take to our students. Here on the right side, I have separated a figure out of mandala to explain in brief. Okay, don't we call such extra uh, such figure a regular figure? Uh, you can see the inner circle is similar to the outer circle. If we keep on extending, what would you see? Okay, if you keep on extending it, what we can see? It extend in the same manner. It means here we have the concept of similarity. Learners can be asked come with come up with the strategies to construct the given figure based on the mandala art. We can ask them to calculate the area either by using the formula or by measuring. At the end of it, uh, what do we notice about is the diameter of both the circle, median of our triangles, diagonals of a square. Such questions gives a huge scope of taking it to the higher level that they will come up with concurrent lines, center of the triangle, center of both the circle, and also the point of intersection of diagonals of the square. A simple thing like diameter of circle, midpoint can also be calculated. It, it fully depends on the teacher, how far uh, the teacher will like to take to the students according to the, their level we need to take. Okay. okay, here there is a nested square based on the mandala art. Uh, given the measure, okay, on the right side, I made that, okay. Uh, the measurement of side of the square are given 2 centimeter, 2 root 2 centimeter, 4 centimeter, 4 root 2 centimeter, 8 centimeter, 8 root 2 centimeter, and 16 centimeter. Now my question is, the progression that is happening, what kind of progression is that? Is there anyone? What kind of progression is that? Okay, I'll check here. Okay. What kind of progression if um, the people... If the side of the square is 2 centimeters... Uh, yeah. AP, AP, AP. Do you want to press the AP? AP? Once... Yeah. Or, okay, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It is geometric progression with the common ratio is root 2. Okay, now, uh, if 2 cm, 4 cm, 6 cm, 8 cm are the length of the square, what kind of progression is it? Okay, then it will be the common difference of 2, then it will be the automatic progression. Most importantly, it is a concept uh, we find out why it is a GP and why it automatic progression. Uh, a student can be asked uh, to find the perimeter area and we can encourage them to construct the square Mandela using the compass and scale and use the different line art just we discussed before. Different lines art can be used here and can be made to the Mandela art too. Okay, how many of you will agree on this point? Uh, mathematics uh, is all about being a creative thinker, not a calculator. Will you agree on this? After having all the insight about the art integration. Okay, I'm uh, looking in the chat box. Yes, Puspasunar, yes, yes, yes. So many yes here. That's very nice. So many yes here. Please move away. Okay, okay, sir. Uh, at the end, uh, when we implement such types of art integration, uh, art integration teaching and learning mathematics approach, it will enable, uh, it will enhance the quality of the teacher and makes the student uh, motivate in learning. It changes the monotonous learning to the joyful learning. It helps to divert 
uh, weak and uninterested students in the learning mathematics, mathematics. Uh, it can direct teacher and students to break out the abstracts that we found on the mathematical problem. Now, all it is based on the lecture base. We will get work on the abstract form and it found we are finding so difficulties. Students have the opportunity to use their artistic skills and figure out math problem, uh, what they are learning. It helps them to analyze the picture and develop mathematical ideas, creativity, and critically, which ultimately enable greater academic achievements. Okay, in this way, I like to thank today's presentation, sir. Okay, thank you very much for your wonderful presentation, Para Samal Thakuri, sir. Actually, very well, excellent, outstandingly. I request you to uh, stop sharing so that we can have some questions if there is in the chat box. I also believe and I also have experienced that uh, mathematics is uh, thought to be um, subject-centric, bookish knowledge, and um, we usually uh, encourage our students to do the problems given in the textbook so that they will achieve or they will uh, obtain or secure the good marks in the examination for their future career. Not only that, actually, not only scoring the marks is sufficient for uh, to, to run our life, life uh, in the future, to run our life. Reaction, that's my question. Just uh, how was your student Sparasji that was excellent, uh, actually outstanding presentation? Just one my curiosity how was how were students reactions to these methods uh, uh, when you implemented in the classroom yeah so so when i got familiar with ethnomathematics i still i have gone through your paper also and some part because of the lockdown i did, i couldn't attend all these things but some part uh, to teach the circle like these materials in the theorem part also i have taken these materials in inside my classroom and the engagement of the students i found it is very awesome okay i feel like uh, i used to feel like i'll get a certain degree and i'll go to the tc and i will make the, some kind of the income that was only my pers perspective but when i got all these materials my broader sense every day i am learning the new things how can i connect the bring bring the new things to the materials the student got oh so what to say it is so students are enjoying a lot Okay, thank you very much. So yeah, really, okay, more more we focus on textbook problems, but we are, if we, we as a teacher uh, are able to connect those uh, ideas of mathematics so, uh, through this art, then that would be excellent. And I have seen here next question, Regina Casey has asked uh, one question, Paras sir, what if we apply such methods in secondary level? I think you have been doing this in the secondary level, but another question is, a question that is undergraduate students in the school. Uh, what about undergraduate students in the school? Undergraduate, I didn't understand what this school means. Undergraduate, and how can we integrate such methods? Bachelor level, Mavan. Uh, what happens? Level. Level. It's, it's, uh, yeah, in the bachelor level. Yeah. But in the school, is really okay. Have you uh, have you got any experience of integrating those ideas or thought of integrating those ideas in the bachelor's level, or sir? And now I am just studying the master level. I, I am not making any such types of plans and taking it to the uh, my curriculum on bachelor because I am not teaching there. But till the grade ten, some part it is not possible uh, right now to bring all these materials to the secondary level. Some part we can take them and we can connect. They will show the eagerness to learn. They will start to source. But in the higher grade, one kind of thing is that we, we have to keep on doing research because such types of research done on the uh, the mathematics part is very less in our context. So it was very hard for me also to bring all these materials. We, the scholar like that, if we keep on uh, finding out, doing the research, bringing the new materials, then why not sure some, at some point we may can reach there, we may can bring uh, slowly, slowly, gradually, it will get sense. I feel so. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. Let me take out another. My assumption yeah. may be correct, but from my perspective, uh, uh, I share all these things. Yeah, of course. Actually, um, uh, he is uh, graduating from this Kathmandu University doing his MA in Mathematics Education, yet he is uh, actually working in the um, secondary level of the secondary level. Maybe if um, he will complete his master's, then uh, start uh, teaching uh, the upper school uh, in the colleges and universities. Maybe he will be trying for that one. So I will just uh, wish you good luck, uh, Parasar. And yet another question I can say here, I think not question, but one uh, argument uh, or some, uh, uh, interesting fact is written. Uh, we can, you you have connected the tessellation, geometry and sequence and series part of mathematics to art. How can we connect art to the algebra? Means he is asking, Sandra Sekhar Sakuta is asking, you might have uh, brought tessellation, geometry and sequence and series, something like that. But sequence and series already came here. And tessellation, geometry also to some part came here. I think he has written here. Can be used there. How can we connect R to algebra? Okay, that, that thing's okay. Like a mandala shape I have brought in the class. Yeah. Okay. How, uh, in what ways you divide, like the paper folding, algebra for A plus B equal to square. We have long the rectangle uh, square plus A plus B like that. We have done this all. We are familiar. On that way, we have to keep on sourcing these materials. We have to do work at first. Being a teacher, it is not that what is written, written in the text. We take it there and teach. We have to, being a teacher, being a, being a growing teacher, we have to keep on sourcing that things, how we can connect. We have to keep on breaking down all these things. And uh, if doing so, uh, I may do one thing of uh, uh, algebra on that pattern. Other will do the another activities. Our work is to collect and integrate and take it to the classroom. Uh, okay. There is one question. Yeah, I can see, sir. Yeah, I can see here. So yeah, yeah. actually, only it, it is just the beginning. Uh, we have, we have uh, actually got some ideas from Parasamal Thakuri, sir, here. So we can explore. He will also explore how uh, he can uh, or we can uh, connect this art uh, integration or uh, we can connect this art in our mathematics teaching and learning. But one more question is that uh, Susan Pitragar, sir, here. Uh, here's um, art here. Apart from using the art pieces such as Rangi and Thanka in your pedagogies, do you also refer to the actual visuals from around us to help your students understand mathematics? Did you get the question? Pardon, sir, once. Yeah, how, how do you, uh, uh, can you actually connect, uh, how, how do you connect these uh, actual visuals from around us to help your students understand mathematics? Actual visuals around us are there, so many visuals are there, right? So yeah, how can yeah. you have those ideas? Do you have any idea? Okay, I am also exploring the things, how we can connect, how much, um, materials much materials i am also trying to collect and i am on the exploring phase okay why not sure the through the visual uh, visual arts also we can bring the so many materials while i i was searching doing all these materials exploring these all these things what i present you today at that time also i found so many insight uh, it is on the exploring phase okay through the visual arts like what is in the environment we can we have to try what is the uh, exact happening in the real life activities and we can we have to try how we can make the stories or all these things and uh, to the curriculum or uh, inside the classroom activities so thank you very much for the questions now we are running out of the time is uh, thank you very much all the participants that you have put the queries here and uh, uh Amal Thakuri sir you are also um, uh, I also give a big thank to you for your wonderful presentation today. Uh, now, next, um, I would like to request and invite uh, the next presenter of today, uh, Durga Pandey Parajuli, madam. So, uh, please uh, start doing your slides. Uh, uh, she is um, doing her one year MA in STEAM education from Kathmandu University School of Education. Uh, please, madam. Share slides, okay? Yeah, please uh, start. Madam, your slides are seen here.
focusing on transforming towards the integrated approach to project-based learning. While as a STEM uh, scholar, I came to know about different uh, pedagogy theories, and from there I came to know about the, the importance of integrated approach in project-based learning. So before moving further, i like to explain uh, today's out, uh, outline of my presentation. Uh, in the beginning, uh, I'm going to talk about the, my understanding related with project-based learning. And similarly, why is integration needed in our day-to-day -day life or our curriculum? Similarly, further, I will explain my research program. On the other hand, I will give some examples of integrated projects which I implement during the research field. Uh, then I will uh, show so, so the video related with my learner's experience. On the other hand, my finding in the preliminary phase. Uh, at last, I will need to uh, exp explain about my learning experience and it's before and after the STEAM education. Uh, we all are familiar with the concept of project-based learning. So today I'm not going to explain more about uh, here project-based learning, what is it here, but I'm just going to share my understanding. Um, it is more about the people is uh, student centric uh, teacher facilitated pedagogy where learners get opportunity to build knowledge and skills through the different projects set around challenges and problems. Uh, we can see that in this project um, based learning, students are themselves construct the media, construct the knowledge, they will construct the, uh, in, construct the information. While in the project based learning, we are posing some, uh, some problems and some challenges to learners, they can investigate the problems, they can find the different solution. So it is more the student driven, which is more needed in our daily to day to day in this current situation of our curriculum. What the teacher guide, teacher role is just a facilitation and provide the new opportunity for learners. On the other hand, there is the one quote: "Tell me and I forgot. Show me and I remember. Involve me and I will understand." Similarly, this project-based learning also focuses on learning by doing. We also know that if we see the beauty of cooking, we just forget that one. But if we involve in that, we we'll remember and make our learning more and more authentic. Similarly, project-based learning also focuses on that. On the other hand. While um, uh, applying the project based learning in our classroom is more connected with the content, content and context. I believe without making the connection between content and co context, the learning will not be meaningful. It did not uh, uh, help a learner to make the sustainable understanding of their knowledge. Similarly, on the other hand, it, it focuses on the constructing new knowledge. It's not only the for the learners who are we call as a fast learner or solo learners. If work based learning involves all the learners to consider the new knowledge, they analyze the problems, they find a different solution and come with the creative knowledge. So we can just construct the new knowledge. On the other hand, it is a trust different disciplinary approach where students can use their different discipline approach like science, math, English, language, arts in the involved in solve the that problem. So it is a transparent approach so far. Based on if a I'm going to tell this all about the based on the two most uh, articles, which is uh, focused on Dilki and Meher and Wu. Similarly, if you go further, why project based learning is important in our classroom? While posing some questions and challenges to learner, learner begin to plan how we are going to solve it. It develops the quality of planning. On the other hand, they see the different of the problems. Why can I solve this? How can I go for far? They did the different perspective, different dimensions. They develop the skill of critical thinking. On the other hand, while doing the collaborative task together, they develop the concept of decision making. They have to make a, make one mutual understanding. On the, on the other hand, they develop the strong communication skill. Without that, it's a bogus key. It's constant, uh, it's constant with suggest as you can learn, it will not be successful, not to be possible without the communication skills. Similarly, it also encourages uh, students about social responsibility. For instance, if we provide a learner the challenges, the real life challenges, problems is a project, they will emphasize about the problem. They will know that this is for ourselves, like for the pollution, for example, pollution. Similarly, it's also helps to work with others. 
while doing the project, not only in the classroom, but if we in, encourage learners to make a collaborate with their parents, their other classroom, other school says they also build the concept, build the knowledge to work with others. Similarly, they'll understand the cross cultural understanding as we show in this picture. The, uh, the children go to the one, the one of the old lady. So here we we'll learn about the exchange the cross cultural knowledge. If we go further, why integration is needed in our curriculum or in our daily life? Is our real life is connected with enormous problems? In general, there are different solutions. But if we are focusing on a single problem, single discipline, that might not be possible to solve that problem, which I came from the concept of STEAM. It provides the one in whole. Integrates, if we integrate all the disciplines, it will provide the concept of one in whole. Similarly, we take the example of one child. In our daily life, if we send our child to the market to buy something, if child go to uh, buy the vegetable first, you will investigate. You will, uh, you will uh, find the curiosity which which vegetable I want to buy, which is more tastier, which is more healthier. Here comes the, here the concept come the concept of science. On the other hand, if we going to like know the prices and he begin to compare, the prices nearby me is quite higher than the prices here. Why is this happening? He begin to make logical the use of maths come there. On the other hand. While going to the, you begin to bargaining, please make me this quite low. They count the concept of arts, language. On the other hand, while paying, he might, he might either he use or cash or he may be used from the ATM. There comes the concept of technology. The integration is all, all over in our real life, our communication, in our workplace, but we are depriving from here. So it's very essential to make connection with integration of disciplines to make our life more learning, meaningful learning. Being an expert from the STEAM education, I came to know that being an expert in one is one subject is not able to make a make a life or life meaningful learning. So for a child to develop for 21st century skills, we need to make them to make focus on the holistic learning, which is only possible through the integration. Uh, if I talk about the further about my research, in research uh, I came to know that though we are focusing on the progressive education as an educator, but I found like we are some lacking somewhere. Because even now also we are focusing on single uh, subject-centric project. So after, the, after taking the classes of STEAM, uh, you know, I came to know that oh, no, we need to change the pattern. We need to integrate design, or in design and implement projects with the interest of different subjects like mathematics, social science, and language to make learning more meaningful, time relevant, and cost efficient. For this, I have designed and implemented different projects, which I'm going to share now. First project, which I have designed in my research field that is related with the please make a list of three days food items with you or your parents buy and find out the prices of each food and make a total. While seeing this, we can see that this concept of math is coming here with the relative the food. On the other hand, like differentiate those food and draw a make, make a model with clay, what types of food are those? Bodybuilding, body portraiting, energy giving, concept of science as well as concept of arts, while like making a drawing or making the model of something fruits, their concept come, come from the um, arts. Similarly, Write a paragraph in Nepali, English language, about your favorite food. While writing about the favorite food, you should not only write the paragraph, they also begin to critical thinking. If, if for example, if a student likes to have momos, and while writing the essay, and he begins to evaluate, I write the food, different types of food, in which category it begins. I think it is healthy or not unhealthy. We, we not, never need to impose the content to the knowledge. They will find out themselves. Similarly, we can see from this picture as well, the um, student has submitted different pictures here related to the bodybuilding food and their prices. On the other hand, we have designed another project which is, which is related with the integrated curriculum of Mother's Day. In here, uh, it is, we take it as our assignment of last, uh, last, um, last assessment courses where students at Mother's Day, in Miru Hamra Shilafra, we are connected it with the, is Mother's Day is coming near. 
Do you have any plan how you are going to celebrate? Why we need to celebrate Mother's Day? How do people celebrate it if their mother is no more? We are we we meet in this way for Hamshir for similarly for English. Write a draw on how you celebrate Mother's Day. We are incorporating that way in another way in Nepali. Similarly, Hama Sangat Sarpal Garera, Mary Ama Bisama Ek Anuchet Hosra, Kachama Shunaun Hos. On the right and easy part, we have incorporated it as a design a beautiful gift for your mom with using a waste materials. They have invented like uh, using the uh, dry paper wrapper, they make the bangles, that is so innovative. Similarly, in computer way, we integrate is make a flip book showing something related to your you and your mother. On the other hand, math. Collect the things that are used by your mother, like bangles, earrings, lipstick, bindis, etc. They write their shapes. We, can, we have incorporated in this way for grade one. Similarly, another project which I, which I have designed for my research is make a model of plant with the help of different grains and boxes and label the different parts of plant. Similarly, add the total number of beans and grains and present in the classroom. Here we can see in the picture, a student has uh, presented very artific artificially, like, like first Bindan in Chitrakar sources. They, in this concept of science, they incorporate the concept of arts, the concept of the math, while they're counting the different form of beans. Similarly, the, the pattern and the design is so beautiful. The concept of engineering come here. So you can incorporate different disciplines in one project. On the other hand, me and my family. This is another project which I have designed and I'm planning to implement. Me and my family. There's in Greater, there's a theme of me and my family. In this um, project, in Hamra Sherfero, I, I have incorporated like, what will you do when your friends come at your home? What type of food you offer? Draw a picture and differentiate what type of food are they? Similarly, in mathematics, we are incorporate with not down you and your and your parents parents cell number last five digit then orange in ascending and descending order as well find the or in even number two on the nepali tapai lake of the makostu kustu khani kura khani bayo click hai ko khani kura sustu kar tiyota and you can incorporate nepali and write a reflective journal what you feel after this you can incorporate in English as well. Similarly, they can either form the about role play. Like if there is no one in the family, they can make a role play and click the video and send to us. In this way, we have planned the project. On the other hand, if we talk about transdisciplinary approach, which I learned from the STEAM, and we are incorporating this grade six and seven, that is one is like this is increment in the waste day by day by day in the Kathmandu. How can we contribute to reduce it from our side or how can we manage the waste of the school? Analyze the effect of it and present your ideas in group to manage waste. In this project, we can see that we are not saying students to, you can do it in math, you can do this in science, you can do this in arts, you can do in this in social. But here we are posing the questions which are related with our daily day-to-day -day life. From here, they can generate the emphasize, they can bring their responsibility to us, their, their is a responsible citizen. From here, they investigate how can we reduce this waste? How can you, you minimize the waste of a school? So they begin there. So they are they source like this much waste is produced from one day, like five days waste is produced from five one day, then how can waste produce in first 30 days? The unit metal came there on the other hand. They begin to source in YouTube how can they manage, reuse the recycle the technology come by itself. And they begin to analyze and critical think. They will be collaborate with friends. They will different ideas. Similarly, may, maybe they can do like composting also here, or they can do other um, like they are arranging the, the different type of dustbin ban. They can do anything. So with the concept of arts, math, science, the engineering is incorporated here. On the other hand, another project related with there is a useless land in the front of the school. How can we use that head space to make our school front view more beautiful? Here also, while solving this problem, the discipline concept of mass came first. What is the area of that place? They begin to find out that area, and they begin to make the group over there. They make collaboration. What type of food we are going to? What type of plant we are going to plant it there? Maybe flowering, non-flowering, or different types of flower. Maybe gardening becomes concept of science. 
kitchen garden. Let's make prison gardens. Concept of science came there. Let's go and search from YouTube. How can we manage this place more beautifully? Concept of engineering. Concept of arts came there. And they went to present in the classroom with the whole uh, school. The concept of language come there. Uh, different approaches, youth project. Like, we can do. I, I just saw the show the different types of uh, courses, why we can do multidisciplinary, why is the content knowledge, one theme, just mother's list, written with the different disciplines, similarly in the interdisciplinary concept, with the food items, students are collaborating with parents, collaborating with uh, their friends, and they come, they come the concept of interdisciplinary. On the other hand, we are posing the question to the learners to, to understand the real life problems, and their, they they are different discipline concepts, social science, math, they came together. We are not saying that them that like, do this from science, do this from math, but they are generating different discipline ideas and to solve that problem, the transitional concept can be. Here's a short video of my students. Let's see this. Sir, someone is coming. Hello, everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I prefer integrated projects and subject wise projects because it is just like an activity. It helps me that different subjects are related to each other, like science, math, English, social, etc. Me and my parents were able to share ideas to tell them about the project, and I enjoyed it that year. We're studying in a curriculum format for our finals and evaluation. We have been given the topic Mother's Day. In this topic, I read an essay about my mother in English and in the I collect personal belongings of my mother. I make a picture of I make food and the car for my mother. I feel happy and realize the importance of my mother. Thank you, everyone. While doing this project, I feel I came to figure out that different subjects are feeling with each other. For example, the, this integrated project of science is also related to the prices of math. And in the other side, I also learned how to develop my drawing skills. This is very interesting. Thank you. in my field uh, research, research field, I came to know that it has enhanced creativity, not only in the learners, but as well in the teachers also. One of the teacher participants showed me like, uh, while integrating the different disciplines, he also came to know about like, different disciplines together <clears throat> and that he enhanced the learning of learners without being, the, being so much burden to learners. Similarly, we can see in the front first picture also, we are just giving the learner to differentiate the food, uh, different category in category of food, but they are presenting like a different way. There is one creativity, they present their own creativity there. 
similarly. Uh, I came to know that uh, while interviewing the project, one of the my loaners uh, said that he he that was not fascinated towards mathematics. But while integrating the project, he told me like. I am unknowingly learn the math, so it makes their learning meaningful. It also shows that the students who are not uh, really want to learn uh, some disciplinary subject, if we will integrate that into some project-based learning, they will learn more, uh, more clearly, and they will come with the meaningful learning. On the other hand. Uh, this time relevant too, because uh, as we know that Nepal government has has implemented integrated curriculum in grade one, one to three. So it's very essential to make an uh, integrated project. Similarly, uh, on the other hand, in, in 21st century, uh, we need to develop different collaborative communication reasoning skills. For that also, the integrated uh, projects are most essential. On the other hand, this is cost efficient too. For uh, analyzing one uh, one materials for different perspective, it it really helped to make cost efficient. Uh, here I'm going to share my understanding. Is uh, we are in the end of our semester, so um, before I am going to the STEM education, I focus on the book memorization. Because I'm also trained in the same way, so I focus on that. And when I'm, I were a teacher, I also focus on the same thing. So we need to read, we need to focus on the grade. But now I focus on the learning by doing. If we learn together, it is very essential for building our capacity, our collaborative skills, our logical rejoining, to him out from our comfort zone. On the other hand, of the experience. It's a math, math, is, math teacher is an English scholar. I feel that math and English are like the high subject, that, that, that type of notion. But now I think, like a high teacher of our hand, equal contribute to do some work. So we, all subjects are equal. So we, there is in learner the equal uh, equal integration of subjects are needed. On the other hand, we are we will also provide we will also get the knowledge. It's a front desk of being provide us knowledge like informing. But now I believe we need to focus on reforming and transforming because in this twenty uh, first century, uh, learner uh, any subject based knowledge cannot get, uh, get into the uh, make them more complete. So it's more focused on reforming and transforming. On the other hand, we have to focus on the practical emancipatory uh, knowledge rather than technical guided, like the fixing the mobile, fixing the freeze. You can do this step, this step, rather than this. We have to make them the collaborate, communicate. We have to work with them, to take out from them, them from the comfort zone. On the other hand, teacher centric. While making the classroom, it is now trend has changed. Now we have to make the co-plan of the students, co-planner, co-facilitator. We have to uh, find out their uh, their understanding where they are with me right here. So now the teacher role is changed as a facilitator, co-planner. Rather than focusing on what is in the curriculum, now it's time to focus on what students really want to know, what they want to uh, they want to investigate. That way we need to develop the knowledge. Uh, in the last, I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Bansal Luchel, sir, who has always guided us and give us so very insightful information and uh, he was guided in every time for, for me. Similarly, another, uh, I'd like to thank um, Mr. Assistant Professor Binut, sir, who is um, our head of the department also. Uh, without whom my research will not be possible. Uh, similarly, I'd like to thank Indra Mani Sassar, who is our course, course facilitator, who is always guided and for providing me, for working me from the back. And other, I'd like to uh, thank all the course facilitators from semester one, semester two. Nidra Sar, Nidra Sar, Parvati Ma'am, Rosni Ma'am, Surali Ma'am, Hussain Sar, every, every facilitator. Similarly, my family member. Uh, in this pandemic, I think this is not possible without the support of my family. And my classmates who are always encouraging me to start from my knowledge. Uh, thank you, Indra Sar. This much this from my side. Okay, thank you very much. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you very much. Uh, Durga ma'am for your wonderful presentation. So you speak a little faster, but it sounds good. Um, maybe sometimes uh, there was some kind of um, problem in this uh, due to internet problem also, maybe. Okay, anyway, it was wonderful presentation and the topic was uh, 
also very interesting. Uh, looking on this presentation and this uh, topic here today regarding this um, uh, STEM, uh, sorry, project-based learning, I also remember how I used to think all about project-based learning. Project-based learning, I used to think, I would think um, one, one in two ways. One is uh, like um, a wall project. In Nepali, we can call it a Bite, Bite project. And another is really what we actually involve our students doing these projects. So what, the, what does uh, what I mean to say is that it is not only uh, making some kind of um, uh, projects and pasting on the wall and um, just uh, making proud of ourselves, uh, 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 feeling proud, proud of ourselves that look here, our students have done so many projects. Rather, we have to actually involve students in exploration. They have to investigate, they have to explore uh, regarding that problem to find out the possible solutions. And if you, they engage in such type of project-based learning, they will develop their different kind of soft skills, 21st century skills, like communicative skills, problem-solving skills, creative skills, personal thinking skills as well, so, so and so on. So project-based learning is not only uh, making some kind of pictures uh, and pasting on the wall. Rather, we have to involve them in the activity. Thank you very much for your wonderful presentation and the theme that we have brought out here. So STEAM education, actually, this STEAM approach helps our students as well as us, we as teachers, educators, educationists, to actually bring about the integrated ideas and concepts that we actually need in our daily life. We are not uh, a person uh, who always think of only one subject like somebody in mathematics, somebody in science, but everybody needs all the ideas, all the knowledge and skills that are needed in our um, uh, daily life activities. Thank you very much once again, Durga ma'am. Now let me check out some chat, uh, some queries if there is their wonderful presentation, wonderful presentation. Uh, mesmerizing, wonderful presentation. I love the reflection of the little ones. Awesome presentation. So, so many wonderful presentation I can see here. Okay. Uh, so, one question is here. What may be the most essential parts, components of educators, for educators, I think, to, uh, to, to be success, to successfully incorporate STEAM into their teaching and learning class. I think this is a generic question. Yeah, STEAM approach uh, is uh, uh, one, uh, one way of uh, implementing STEAM approach is project-based learning. This can be one method of implementing the STEAM approach uh, from project-based learning. I think uh, it's a very impressive. Uh, can project work can be done by only an individual? If so, how do we instill the forces in kids, particularly the collaboration skill? I think this question, uh, uh, can project work be done by only one individual? Do you have anything to say, Durga ma'am? What about if you think of well, using project learning well, single-handedly? While well, doing the project based learning, it's very essential to make collaborate. Like a, uh, if we are doing the single individual, it goes on the, under the uh, problem based learning because there is the imposing the problem and students are just solving the problem. If I'm not wrong, right? I think there is the Binasar also who can make correct to me. Uh, from my learning or the uh, Dilki article, I found that like uh, for making the project based learning, there should be the integration of different uh, disciplines and there should be the collaboration of the learners learners as well because without doing the teamwork collaboration that would not be able to address the prompt uh, forum from the different perspective okay that's great so though you have um, asked Bino sir there so he will be actually um, concluding uh, at, at last so i will just uh, put some light on this 
Uh, yes, uh, actually we have been practicing why not a single person, single student do some kind of project or something like that. Yes, he or she can also do. But what about his or her social skills? One way or another way, he or she has to get involved with the people around him or her. So he has to explore so many things with others. That's why uh, to bring about some kind of conclusions or some kind of possible solutions, first of all, he or she has to explore so many things. And that is only possible when he or she argues or explores or discusses with the group, with the people in the group. That's why I think instead of uh, uh, instantly or inst instead of um, um, actually using single uh, student for project based it is quite better. It is better to uh, involve uh, a group of students to explore things uh, uh, outside the school uh, in the real field and they can find out some kind of solutions. Uh, Bino sir, would you like to put light on this or uh, will you please uh, say later on? It's fine, Indra sir. I, I'll conclude later on. Please, let's okay, move on. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bino sir. Valjandra sir, would you like to say something? Okay. Thank you. Uh, Isma Moyle, do, uh, if you ask me just one sentence, uh, I think, you know, when we talk about project-based learning, um, there are, when we say project, there are certain elements that, that can be called project. But it has to be a somewhat a kind of problem that leads to a kind of a solution or product. And that cannot be done just in one hour or one sitting, there, they might need multiple sitings. And also, uh, in the last hundred years, because Zondiwe formalized this idea of project based learning hundred years back, and recent development in project based learning is, uh, is more towards collaborative learning. So, you know, in order to accomplish the project, we need more than one person. For example, if you take project in a literal sense, then there are there is a project coordinator and there are other people you know, in different parts of that project in order to address different aspects of that project. So from that perspective, students become you know uh, the the actors. Teacher would facilitate and students become actor of that project. So from that perspective, what Durgaji was saying that project-based learning is primarily a, a collaborative learning of you know uh, uh, embraces collaborative learning method so that's what i have to say thank you okay thank you very much Balchandra, sir now um, i can't see any question out there just i have uh, uh, seen here uh, the giving uh, uh, their remarks wonderful presentation out there i think uh, to slow learner, yeah. Is this learning help to learn slow learner and how? We far uh, from this type of learning, but how they involve the students to learning by doing and reflection. Would you like to say something, Durga ma'am? Is this learning help? Yes, sir. I, I want to know. Through the microphone, okay. I want to know that, like, uh, while integrating the project, students have different, uh, different, uh, they, are, they have different potential. Like someone wants to read through the visual, someone to read from the kinesthetic, someone to read the audio. You know, if we are focusing on the project as learning, then students do not feel the uh, that uh, stress about learning. Because like for us, we to go to the when we are feeling the stress, when less, this is like the activity. We are doing the activity. They are feeling in that way. So we can incorporate all the learners here, even the solo learners also. When we also I always share the example. The students who don't who don't want to read the math. He said he told that in this way also we learn the math. Wow, we say that it's it's climatic science in the last. So we can involve all the learners in our project based learning. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you very much for your wonderful answer, uh, ma'am. Yeah, really, I also agree that uh, project based learning is actually to incorporate all kinds of uh, having multiple intelligence and of different uh, ability or whatever we say, the different kind of diverse students so that they can um uh, work together collaboratively to find out some kind of product or something uh, possible solutions thank you very much i think i should go further uh, for the next presentation
uh, because I cannot see other questions here. If there is, then you can also uh, contact with us through email for your further query, queries. Now, next presenter, we have got the last presenter. Uh, before that, I again remind you that uh, we'll have Vinod um, Prasad uh, Pantasa, who will be giving the concluding remark, and he will also say uh, deliver how these all uh, the presentations, uh, the titles, the themes that are presented uh, can be connected in the classroom. He will give a uh, uh, concluding remarks. So now let me invite Purna Sreshta sir. Uh, who is doing his MPhil in STEM education from Kathmandu University School of Education? Purna sir, are you there? Please. Uh, right. Yes, sir. Hello, yeah. uh, sir. And uh, thank you, Indra sir, for giving me an opportunity to present uh, my ideas and uh, the, a small project through this webinar. So I hope uh, I can uh, uh, share my some uh, ideas or the understanding uh, obtained during this. Uh, uh, MPhil classes. So let me present my screen. So is this uh, visible, sir? Yeah, yeah. Please move ahead, sir. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, and namaste. Uh, this is Purna Shrestha. And uh, the today's uh, topic for the uh, presentation is constructing a hygrometer, a STEAM-based project for active learning. Uh, I'm an uh, MPhil scholar in STEAM education, uh, currently starting. Uh, uh, let me uh, introduce uh, the idea of STEAM uh, education. Uh, I hope uh, most of you have uh, some kind of uh, basic overview about the STEAM education. Of course, uh, the STEAM education is an integration of the science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. So uh, it is not necessary that all the components of these uh, STEAM uh, should be equally uh, applied during the implementation of uh, uh, the STEAM component in a project or in a uh, learning approach. Any one of the uh, component can uh, be uh, uh, greater than other, but uh, it is needed that or it is uh, required that uh, for an meaning for a meaningful understanding or for the conceptual understanding the contextual understanding and the collaborative understanding uh, these uh, uh, the interdisciplinary steam approach can be very helpful so the meaning tool that means uh, one of uh, 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 of the participant has initially has initially asked about this the, uh, the if you uh, understand the meaning of something uh, out of that context uh, that can relate to your life or the surrounding that could be a uh, meaningful to you so this is what uh, steam uh, education is all about and uh, the of course the steam education uh, can help to generate the active learning approach and uh, uh, the active learning uh, is also a, uh, the the component uh, the uh, approach of the steam education and it is also based on the uh, constructive approach where the participants or the learner or the students actively involved in learning in not only the uh, the students but also the facilitator or teachers are actively involved during this process so it may include the project based problem based learning think peer and share some uh, some of where we can uh, see as TPS, uh, uh, the online gaming or simulations, some kind of projects that is the interaction between teachers and the students during the, uh, the classes or during the pro uh, problem, uh, the collaborative learning groups where they can share each other uh, their understanding, they can uh, uh, find out the solution from their collaboration, the critical reflection after the, uh, the, uh, the work out uh, between them, the case studies, writing journals or logs, storytelling, poetic presentation, uh, write uh, and produce a newsletter, uh, concept mapping, uh, some kind of strengths, debate, analysis on re uh, and reaction to the particle articles or some videos, uh, as well as the strength presentation. So these are the uh, some of the ideas of achieving the active learning in a learning uh, or teaching approach. So uh, this is what STEAM education uh, can look for uh, uh, in future. So 
uh, whatever uh, be the uh, if you need to understand simply uh, what about active learning it's simply your hands is on minds on and heart on means uh, the uh, hand mind and emotion should be active during the learning so if all of these or any two of these are active uh, during the learning process that could be an active learning so uh, let me uh, move further about my project and the, the project the objective of this project uh, is to enable strength to design a hygrometer uh, using dry and wet bulb thermometer i will explain about this later on uh, the uh, it will help to measure relative humidity of the air in given places in the same way the student will be able to understand the about the relative humidity and its relation with the dew point or dew formation uh, so after the uh, uh, the completion of the project, uh, I uh, I hope this trend will uh, be inspired to learn actively using interdisciplinary approach like in STEAM approach in a meaningful, creative, and authentic learning environment. So uh, uh, in uh, in this project, the material requires are uh, the simply cotton gauze or muslin gauze, muslin gauze or, or simply. Uh, a filter uh, paper uh, in a chemistry lab, which we readily use, a blotting paper that can absorb certain amount of water. A seizure, small rubber band, small plastic bottle, clear plastic straight in tape to identical red alcohol type th thermometer. Uh, the red alcohol is uh, especially uh, asked so that it could be easy for uh, strength to learn or to read the readings of the thermometer during the observations and they can clearly take uh, data from that thermometers. So these are the uh, the general ideas, uh, material ideas of the material required. And the uh, the project, this project is, is uh, uh, the activity of this project is based on the 5E model, which is which contains engage, explore, explain, elaborate, and evaluate. The evaluate section is also uh, considered as the assessment section. Uh, and it's first uh, introduced by the Roger Bivey and which is of course uh, the constructive approach of learning where the learners uh, construct knowledge based on their experience uh, during the project. Now, uh, when uh, this trend moved to this section uh, or when we uh, uh, drive our students towards this section, the students are engaged in, uh, with ideas or knowledge required for the project or, or any idea or any problem. Uh, and for that, a dialogue interaction, uh, some interesting question can be carried out with students uh, based on their prevalent knowledge and, and reflection on their eye on the topic, such as uh, the what is this? Can anyone tell me right now? So, of course, uh, this is a. Let me check the chat box. Okay. What what is this figure signify? Signify yeah. What does the yeah. dew? Okay, that's right. Uh, the uh, dew on the uh, leaf. In the same way, dew on the rose petals. Now, in the same way, we can uh, introduce such uh, questions during the uh, engagement section, so that a student can uh, get some idea on the topic, what they are going to read, and how they uh, how it can uh, influence in their life. So that they can draw meaning out of that understanding. In the same way, uh, why a bottle of uh, coke can be taken out of a refrigerator, for, uh, found to have a drops of water outside the bottle, which you have uh, experienced in your daily life. And I have uh, an object, uh, a glass of uh, glass uh, containing uh, the ice water, where you can find that. Uh, you can see if you uh, can see on the screen. Uh, please look at me. Uh, is this visible, sir? Yes, 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 please. Yeah. Yes, yes, it is visible. Go ahead. Okay, let me. Uh... Okay, in the same way, this uh, here, this one is a, a, a glass of water containing ice, and you will find the drops, uh, water drops around the glass. And if you saw such ideas uh, in front of the students during the uh, initial stages of your uh, presentation or the class, they find interesting and they are engaged in the uh, class. So you will find that there is a, a lot of water drops around the uh, glass. And this is all due to the condensation of the water 
कंडेंसेशन ऑफ द एयर सराउंडिंग द ग्लास ये ग्लास को औरों पर से बहुत वो वाटर से कंडेंस होए बने से यू विल फाइंड द ड्रॉप अराउंड इट सो दिस वन इज हाउ वी इंगेज स्ट्रेंथ ड्यूरिंग द लर्निंग एक्टिविटीज यू कैन इट कैन आल्सो क्रिएट इम्पैक्टी टुवर्स द प्रोजेक्ट और द लर्निंग प्रोसीजर दिस इज आल्सो द वे ऑफ क्रिएटिंग एन इम्पैक्टी टुवर्स द प्रोजेक्ट so they can uh, the empath empathize is the uh, very important word during uh, the learning process so how dues are formed uh, in our surrounding so uh, we can uh, pose such questions in front of these trends and allow some time to think about them think about it and they could give some ideas whether it is right or wrong but of course they can give their give some idea uh, and uh, if needed we can correct them later on but at least they have they create some ideas around it in the same way uh, so so this is what we just uh, what we what i just show you uh, right now and in the same way as the project is also based on the dry uh, ball thermometer and weight ball thermometer one must understand what is dry ball and weight ball thermometer uh i find that uh, some uh, most of uh, here uh, most of the participants here are from uh, mathematics background so uh, can anyone tell me uh, what is uh, dry ball uh, thermometer and weight ball thermometer <clears throat> okay let me check check in the chat box okay i'm also seeing the chat box okay anyone can you repeat the question yeah. again sir uh can you can you continue to slow the slide uh, show the slide yeah in okay. the server will say yeah what is dry bulb uh, thermometer and wet bulb thermometer so two types of thermometer is asking the question if you have any idea please post your thought okay so no. yes of course uh, some of you have your some understanding okay so uh, probably you might have a uh, seen thermometer uh some time kind of clinical thermometer uh, uh recently uh, there are uh, mostly digital thermometer around us but this one uh, in the screen is uh, uh, alcohol based uh, alcohol type not exactly the alcohol the alcohol type rate uh, thermometer uh, and the so this is what we will ask uh, during the uh, engagement section so that the, uh, they will come up with some idea maybe right or wrong so but at least they uh, get some engagement towards the project so these are the, uh, the, these are the some pictures uh, for the engagement during the pre engagement in a, uh, so uh, you you'll see the uh, figure this one this one uh, is a thermometer uh, is a normal thermometer you can easily buy on a uh, market uh, and it is considered as a dry bulb thermometer because uh, it does not con uh, contain uh, any uh, the moisture around the bulb of the thermometer in the same way this uh, this inner one is where a uh, uh, cotton or a, a muslin cloth is attached to it is considered as a wet bulb thermometer so in this way uh, we can also uh, Uh, keep them engaged during the uh, project in the same way since this is a hygrometer project uh, so we can also pose a question like what is hygrometer do you have any idea of hygrometer or have you ever seen the idea the hygrometer so these are the some uh, pictures of the hygrometer uh, and uh, you will also uh, find uh, on google about this uh, like uh, the word psychrometer psychrometer is a uh, hygrometer that uh, is uh, used to measure the humidity around the us so these are the uh, different types of psych uh, psychrometer and this one uh, is the simply simple psychrometer and the actually the uh, the first one uh, with the, uh, the lo uh, thermometer is uh, the uh, hygrometer design in my lab uh, during my project or during the pro this project so in this way we can engage uh, our learner towards the uh, project and after this uh, we will allow them to explore about the project or the content or the concept required for the project 
and where it's been, uh, learn about the phenomena, uh, they can also challenge their understanding uh, the prevalent knowledge uh, may be wrong. So they, uh, they challenge their understand uh, the, uh, the knowledge gained during this process may be challenged. In the same way, they can develop new ideas. So students are inspired to explore theoretical background on the hygrometer. What is hygrometer? So hygrometer is a device that is used to measure uh, the humidity of the year surrounding us or around us. The humidity means the uh, amount of water vapor or the moisture content in the year. Higher the uh, uh, moisture around us, higher is the humid. Nepalima, you can also say adrata. Right? I mean, uh, so in the same way, relative humidity. High above, it also depends on the temperature. Uh, I'm surrounding the temperature also. So this map depend on so. So I have some uh, videos uh, related to it, which uh, uh, which would help students to uh, explore a new idea about the. Uh, the content require uh, the uh, the ideas of the dew formation, how dews are formed, what is exactly relative humidity. But uh, I would like to show you uh, a video uh, which I uh, used uh, uh, during my project uh, for the strengths, uh, as well as uh, a, a sailing station for a teacher. So uh, is this is this visible, sir? Yes, visible. Oh, no, uh, please yeah. stop. Okay, it's a it's a video. Uh, of course, uh, uh, some of you have used this one, aid puzzle. So uh, 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 I will not assign this to you, but uh, directly uh, share my uh, share. Not let let let's uh, write a clear from here. Hello, friends. Today we learn about condensation and its forms: dew, fog, frost, and mist. Mm -hmm. Wow, you're prepared to study about this. Let's start. Matter exists in three states: solid, liquid, and gas. If we cool a gas, it becomes a liquid. This process is known as condensation. It is the process by which a gas changes into a liquid due to a reduction in the energy of its particles. Condensation happens when the vapors in the air... Uh, probably uh, some of you may not uh, seen the video properly, but uh, if you have seen this uh, properly, you can answer this one, right? Uh, like uh, the process by which a gas changes into a liquid is called it is not necessary that you are from a science background, but you can, the, simply a video can explain about this one. The process by which a gas changes into a liquid is called. Can anyone uh, answer this one right now, please? Uh, Indra sir, would you please uh, read uh, the answer if anyone has? Uh, okay, sure, sure. Condensation. Okay, uh, that's great. Uh, if I uh, condensation, uh, on condensation, 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 okay, regularly. Thank, thank you, everyone. If uh, if this one is correct, then uh, I need to uh, if, whether it is correct or, or wrong, or I can submit it. And if this is correct, then uh, I get uh, 100 out of 100. So, in this way, this friend will get engaged towards the video as well. So, it become cold. When the vapor gets cold, it transforms back into a liquid form. Dew, fog, frost, and mist are the forms of condensation. Let's learn about them one by one. Dew. At dawn, very small drops of water. So in the same way, a new question will arise here, uh, is arise here. And uh, where uh, the dew, fog, mist, and frost are formed due to, of course, here is also a condensation. So let me submit this one. Uh, as uh, This is just a presentation. I'm uh, making it quick water often cling to grass and plants this moisture is known as dew air contains water in the form of gas which is called water vapor when warm moist air passes over cool surfaces the air gets cool the water vapor in the air starts to condensate and changes into small drops 
It looks so lovely. The drops cling to cool surfaces such as leaves and flower petals. The temperature at which condensation begins to happen is called the dew point. So what is dew point? So we can answer or the student can answer and uh, it is uh, such idea is very effective uh, while you are uh, taking online classes uh, instead of just showing a video if you post some questions in, in between the video the students uh, will be ready to uh, answer and uh, for that they need to focus on the video so that their concentration cannot move out of the video so it is a very effective one so let me uh, skip right now here uh, in the same way uh, we can we can uh, uh, a, we can go on like this accumulates a dust in the air a moderate wind helps fog to form and to stay in the air fog is so so another question arise and uh, remember uh, actually uh, this is uh, my uh, my uh, situation but when i share with the students they cannot skip it they have to answer this before they move whether it is right or wrong they have to answer it so uh, this is uh, how they will be active during the class sessions. So uh, their hands as well as their minds will be active during the bodies. classes. So let me uh, stop it this video in vapor, front of uh, right now. In, gas form. Uh, in the same way we can, uh, there are other videos I, I, I have in a slide, uh, but um, right. Uh, I'll just show you. Uh, Hello, Internet, and welcome to. So, I generally try to use uh, the video related to uh, some uh, kind of art or animations, uh, which can be easily available in uh, YouTube, which I and, uh, try to. Uh, edit with uh, this kind of eight pauses, but uh, this one is not edited. But I'm just trying to show you uh, the videos uh, can be used uh, to make them explore about the knowledge required for the project, uh, for the for the concept of the uh, humidity, relative humidity. Uh, this is the idea uh, for the exploring explore sections where students can get some idea about the. A dew formation, relative humidity, and its effect on the dew point. So in the same way, uh, uh, since this project is uh, all about the construction of hydrometer, they, and finally they need to construct the hydrometer, they need to uh, watch some kind of uh, the, uh, uh, the video that can help them to construct hydrometer uh, that could be easily available around us. And uh, so I need. Uh, uh, we need to show uh, some uh, videos, or they can explore their own on uh, YouTube. Uh, Humidity. Uh, okay. So this one is a video that can help uh, uh, the learners to uh, develop the kind of hygrometer. And to do that, we need two identical so, thermometers such as these you can buy quite cheaply from any shop or you can use another type a smaller type that you can buy from pet shops they're used in aquaria for example i've tied very tightly a bit of okay so i'm making a little faster so i take the dry bulb thermometer and i take some electrical tape and i attach that first of all at the top of the bottle And then at the bottom of the bottle, so that that thermometer is attached to the bottle. I do the very same thing with the wet bulb. So, a simple wet and dry. Now, uh, this is a, a hygrometer ready to uh, perform the experiment. Three degrees Celsius for about an outside. We need to take it outside and do that. But I'm just going to do it in this room here uh, for about a minute. Now, I've been whirling it around for about a minute. And so we stop whirling and read the thermometers. In this case, the dry bulb thermometer reads 23 degrees Celsius. 
and the wet bowl thermometer reads 16 degrees Celsius. So this is where I need to pause the video. And uh, actually, uh, the, uh, the the temperature of the uh, dry ball when uh, the uh, weight ball thermometer is, uh, is different due to the con uh, the amount of heat uh, taken uh, 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 from the weight ball thermometer to evaporate the water on the uh, weight ball. So that's why the uh, the temperature fall down below the uh, room temperature or the surrounding temperature. And that could help to measure the uh, relative humidity. And uh, of course, we need uh, some time to, for their discussion, group discussions, where they collaborate with each other. They can uh, jot down the important points on the paper, from the book, or from the uh, YouTube, or from the Google, uh, from where they can get different ideas and they can share with each other. They can uh, develop their own idea. Uh, they can be creative. They can be reflect uh, reflective uh, on, uh, during this. We can also uh, post some answer uh, questions. They are uh, so these are the fig uh, figure where the strengths uh, were uh, were engaged in exploration section, and this is uh, what we uh, what I uh, shown them about the uh, the project uh, during this uh, session. So now uh, in this section, uh, explain section, uh, the strength will explain the phenomena and knowledge. Uh, gain during the exploration and the engaged section so uh, they can could or uh, they could some uh, explain something about the uh, the uh, the content required for the project such as the idea on relative humidity idea on the weight and dry ball thermometer the hygrometer and so on and if uh, required we can also facilitate to them to understand the phenomena and improve the knowledge gained by the students we can also take the uh, reflection from the strengths during this process. And of course, uh, the, uh, we will just focus all till now to the uh, theoretical concept. We can also take the idea of the science ga uh, knowledge gained during this process. They can explain about the relative humidity, dew point, idea of weight and dry ball thermometer. They can also explain how to use relative humidity conversion table uh, as well as online portals uh, where uh, they can uh, enter the data to measure the relative humidity. So this is uh, the station where the strengths answer their understanding and uh, the uh, calculating. And this is the uh, 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 scientific table uh, that could help them to uh, measure uh, to re uh, relative humidity. Uh, theoretically or uh, cal by calculation with mathematics, simple mathematics. They can also use uh, online portals uh, uh, in uh, compare uh, for to this uh, conversion table. Now, this one is the elaborate section uh, where they can actually involve in the project uh, through the uh, uh, engineering pro aspect. So uh, they apply the knowledge in constructing hygrometer using provided available local materials. If necessary, we need to facilitate them in constructing hygrometer. Of course, uh, some of them uh, cannot click this, uh, the correct ideas. So at that condition, we need to facilitate, not give the whole idea, but just facilitate to optimum level. So these are uh, this is the, uh, uh, the example of hygrometer designed uh, by my students. So there are four hygrometer and you can see the video. The video is different. Uh, the, video, the hygrometer shown in the video is different than the, the actually designed by my strengths uh, during the implementation of the project. Uh, so these are two, two bottles, simply water, mineral water bottles. The, uh, and since they did not get any water bottles, they use a plank, uh, wooden plank. And this one is uh, uh, the, uh, the juice bottle paper, just paper, probably, an, uh, uh, so they can use anything uh, they are surrounding them, uh, of course, but they need a high uh, thermometer meter for this one. And this is the uh, station. And this one is uh, actually the hygrometer design in my uh, decks. Uh, when I uh, share my understanding with uh, the, uh, the uh, my colleagues, uh, through online process, and, and they also involved uh, in learning the uh, hydro, uh, the designing the hygrometer uh, online, and they of course they also actually designed 
uh, and they, uh, uh, the reading obtained from the those hygrometer design were also very effective and uh, near to the practical value. Uh, strength measured the, uh, the temperature of dry bulb and wet bulb thermometer at different places and uh, allow them to move from one place to another place. So the uh, some of the strengths uh, uh, did the experiment in the uh, in my physics lab, uh, where some of the strengths went to the uh, parking lot, where some of the strengths went to the uh, futsal area, some of the strengths go to the uh, different places, a library somewhere. So th this one is the uh, uh, the uh, uh, process where the strengths involved in uh, taking reading of the hygrometer. So this one is in uh, um, bus basketball area. And this one is uh, where, while they are using online portals to measure the relative humidity and uh, as well as the dew point of those places. The dew point uh, is actually the point where the, the, uh, the water vapor in year started to condense. So uh, I would like to uh, show some videos. Uh, uh, about the project uh, uh, before uh, moving to the elaborate section, sorry, uh, uh, evaluate section. So this one is actually uh, the video related to the uh, the sailing station or the tra uh, training come sailing station with my uh, 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 but teachers of different institution. So where I uh, I'll not show you all the videos, but I just show you some of the clips. So of course uh, there are sort. So this is the idea. Let me move to the final. Okay. Actually, uh, the reading shown by the diagrammetry is uh, true uh, near to the true value. That's why uh, I said that is based on like it's all. Uh, let me switch uh, to the final where uh, the, the teachers actually designed uh, okay, wait. I miss uh, somewhere. So this one is a reflection uh, given by the teacher after the completion of the project. And he, uh, I actually miss Kani Rasmuri Sathya Lebunak Muli Sir Dehong Kuzikuti. Okay, and uh, uh, I uh, let me not move to this one. Let me move to the where my strengths were working for the project. Pressure or lab pressure? Slightly different. This one is another uh, uh, project design, uh, the hydrometer design. And we have some uh, the reflection station at that moment. What they are actually doing this one. Okay, Anus. Okay. Okay. Uh, while doing this experiment, they actually had a, uh, some kind of action nearly fell down. That I mean, the, the thermometer nearly fell down. That's why uh, the paper uh, at the base 
they uh, finally uh, bend it uh, in a uh, rectangle uh, in a real shape uh, at the base so that the thermometer could not fall down so this shows that they are actually creative uh, while they are learning the project uh, learning to design a hydrometer project So these are the data taken by them, uh, uh, both using uh, the uh, the table given to them, uh, as well as uh, the using online portals. So, so this is the final uh, seg segment, uh, segment where my strengths were involved uh, for the presentation. Actually. Uh, uh, this is the, uh, 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 without uh, prior preparation to them. Uh, I didn't allow them. I mean, I didn't mention them about the project. So they uh, they prepared the presentation uh, in a paper uh, in a paper which we uh, 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 which is attached in the whiteboard. But you uh, will like it is not so visible uh, properly. So they prepare uh, the chart paper uh, 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 for the presentation. And they uh, explain about how did they how uh, they did this and how uh, what are the findings they have done this during the project. And I asked some questions of uh, about their understanding about this project. Okay, at that moment, the high, uh, the relative humidity is nearly sixty percent, and which is at that moment was correct. So, uh, so there are there are different groups, uh, the four groups, uh, which uh, uh, divide which uh, I divided during the project, and uh, all of them uh, get the uh, the data. Uh, all the data uh, from the group are nearly matched with each other. So, uh, so this is how I implement the, uh, the uh, project uh, for the students. And I also explain how to implement this project uh, in different schools for the, so that they can, uh, the teachers can, uh, if I explain the, to the teachers, they can also apply to the, uh, to their students. So this is uh, the, how uh, the elaborate sections goes on. Now, at the final session, the evaluation or the assessment session, the students uh, reflect on their knowledge and learning process, what they learned, how was the learning process, and uh, critical solutions can also give in for the improvement of the knowledge. They can also critically reflect about the learning process, and we can also suggest them uh, for them to, uh, 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 the ideas they generate during the process. Now, uh, in my uh, project or in this project, the stream components uh, are, of course, present. So how stream components are present here? The knowledge uh, developed on due, due point relative humidity, all related to the science. So this is science. The construction of hygrometer is engineering. The use of ICT for simulation graphic design. You can, uh, the student can also use graphic design for their own. You know, or they can also watch uh, YouTube videos or as well as they use uh, uh, online portals for the measurement of relative humidity. Uh, that's the technology and uh, the mathematical calculation for the relative humidity. And also the dew point is uh, related to the mathematics. And of course, the presentation of the work, PowerPoint presentation or uh, the paper presentation, they did uh, based on the uh, language art uh, as well as the some uh, visual art. So. Uh, here, uh, the five component of this team is actually present here. So, uh, uh, for the uh, these are the uh, uh, during the assessment system how they did this one, and uh, the assessment uh, of the strengths is also done on the uh, this action on the basis of the rubrics. Uh, uh, some of you have already idea about the rubrics. So uh, I uh, set, uh, divide the five section and the each section has a five point maximum of five point. So uh, they can get a maximum of five point. I didn't give anyone to one or two point, but uh, uh, three to five actually. But uh, if they are not 
uh, uh, up to that mark. So we, uh, we can also need to uh, mark the one point. So this is how I uh, use the rubrics for the uh, assessment of the strengths learning. And, uh, and um, the, the, uh, the project was excellently uh, uh, great for them. They did actually well, uh, did, uh, the, even though there are certain difficulties for them as it's the initial uh, process so this is the uh, the session where we uh, actually i actually assess the project so in this way uh, uh, we completed the assessment pro uh, in this and i asked them about the future project can we use this in the future yes of course some of them uh, actually answer so we can also use this uh, hygrometer that actually designed with low cost, locally available material. It can be used to measure relative humidity at different places of the Kathmandu, or not, uh, the, not simply a Kathmandu, Kathmandu Valley, as uh, some of my strengths are from uh, Lalitpur, some of from uh, Bhaktapur, and some from Kathmandu. So can, they can actually uh, do this experiment at their own places, and we can uh, add, take the average humidity. Actually, uh, the average cannot be the correct one, but uh, this is the how uh, this is a way of learning that's the way and also they can uh, determine the average dew point of the Kathmandu uh, during that day so the, the dew point keep on changing uh, so uh, from place to place so however we can uh, determine the average point in this way uh, we can also further uh, implement uh, further enhance or further uh, uh, increase the uh, concept of this uh, this simple hygrometer project for the larger scale uh, did you find this uh, fruitful to you? Did you or this, is this uh, related to the active learning theme project? Okay, good. So uh, yes, uh, uh, as uh, we do not have more time, so I will uh, end this uh, session. Of course, thank you. Thank you for the uh, the beautiful words. Thank you, sir. Okay, it's fine, uh, Purna sir. Uh, it was outstanding, wonderful presentation that you have presented today. Actually, we also really enjoy it. Uh, now, because um, when I just uh, went through your presentation, I also recall my those days in this school as well as in uh, colleges also because. Uh, uh, while doing um, uh, science uh, up to BSc, I think I hardly remember such type of engaging um, uh, practicals. So we we used to call uh, have I uh, done or not. So, but you have I think engaged students in which grade? One question is there in which grade uh, you have actually applied? This actually, one? it is actually designed for uh, class eleven. Okay, okay, that's great. So now I take some questions from here. Um, uh, the question here is, uh, how to create question as you have done in between the video? Oh, technical question there. Okay. Uh, there is a facility in 8puzzle.com. You can, you can uh, download the videos from YouTube or your, you can uh, enter your, uh, uh, upload your own video. And uh, you can edit that video with some questions. You can have that facility through eight puzzle. So another question is also related to that. Uh, I think you might have given the answer of that one. Uh, and next question here, I can see here. I've seen the question in the beginning. Yeah. Purasa, is digital thermometer dry? One question from Bhavani Thapa. Uh, is yes, digital yes, thermometer yes. dry? Yes, yes, uh, digital thermometer is actually dry. Actually, uh, the, all the thermometers uh, that can be obtained uh, through the, uh, that can be, uh, uh, that what, uh, that uh, we uh, we experience or we observe around us are the dry thermometer. Uh, and when we uh, need to make it uh, wet thermometer, we need to uh, keep some uh, wet cotton or the, uh, the paper, uh, paper uh, with some water around the bulb of the thermometer, bulb of the thermometer. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Purna sir, because we are already running out of the time. That's why now I uh, would like to actually thank all the participants as well as uh, the presenters. You, 
Uh, and uh, uh, without uh, delaying, I would like to request and invite um, uh, Binod Prasad Pantasar, who is also the head of our department. Binod sir, please. Thank you, thank you, Indra sir. Thank you so much. So, uh, just I, I I'll be very brief. I just want to uh, say a few few words and few things. And it was a great day. And then because Susan Chitrakar sir has uh, shared his great ideas on this arts as a knowledge productions from the perspective of uh, knowledge productions as an epistemology, not only as objects and not only as a, as additional uh, additional things. And then that was very uh eyes opening for i think many of us including myself and then as you know that the first presenter is paris hamal uh, Thakuri, sir, and then who is doing m in math education and then i really i am really impressed by his the ways of presentations and then as well as the, the content that he has brought so especially you can see the overall ideas was how can we use this uh, cultural perspective in in school mathematics and then how can we bring uh, several ideas or patterns mandalas rangolis and even in in our formal school educations and that was that was excellent i think all of you enjoyed uh, we, we can also make sense that you have made a very good uh, remarks in the chat and similarly the next one uh durga pandey and then uh so who is currently doing one year masters in steam educations and then her focus was more on project-based learning so even within the project-based learning her ideas was aligned with this integrated ways of learning and then she explained why integration is needed. So I think one of the notable point is that uh, she shared this multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary, as it is trans transdisciplinary ways of making projects. So if you remember her presentations, so she was sharing this waste management and then how can we use uh, so-called unused land, so under the ideas of this transdisciplinary project. So uh, from her presentations, what I can relate that I think the projects needs the context and then it needs more experiences. And then apart from this, the reflections is very, very needed. It's not only the learning by doing, it's also learning by doing and then reflecting the practices. So similar, I want to thank Durga Pande as well. And now the uh, just now the furniture has brought very excellent ideas. So in terms of constructing a hydrometer uh, for active learning. So as you can see, he has used several components of STEAM education. And the most important part is that he has used so different stages. So engage, explore, and explain, elaborate, and even the assessment or evaluations. And then I also want to note that uh, the most important part is to assess the projects. And then he has clearly demonstrated the rubrics uh, under which different parameters are there, different criteria are there, and then different explanations under each. Uh, so criteria are given. I think we can uh, practice this uh, rubrics under this project based uh, on, on, our, on our different projects. So just sum up these things. So what I realized that we have to uh, uh, so take this take home message uh, are these three most important things. The first one is we as teachers and teacher educators should be very active in terms of exploring innovative ideas in developing and implementing in creative tools and projects. So until and unless we, we become very active in exploring and then identifying the projects, I think th these things cannot be possible. And the second one this I think we have to now focus more on integrated nature of projects rather than focusing particular one subjects. Although it is subjects in our schools or because there are such kind of structures, education structures, but we can interrelate with, uh, with, with other subject teachers and, and even with, with the students. And the third important message that uh, I took today, and perhaps many of you also have taken in the same way. So how can we use arts as a process of learning and then how it helps for uh, motivating and encouraging uh, learners to make a better sense of different ideas. So, uh, so thank you so much. Again, at last, I want to thank Indramani sir, and who is doing very hard work to coordinating these all kinds of things. And then uh, Susan Chitrakar sir, who gave a time, then I, uh, so I can see he's here. And similarly, there are other friends, Niro sir, Netra sir, who has been working hard, so behind the scene. So the most importantly, all this, uh, uh presenters and the participants who has given who have given time in, in this evening even in the saturday time so thank you so much so we'll be uh coming in the next week as well because we are running this webinar 
every uh, every saturday from 4:30 to so it's it's all about it's almost the 7 so thank you so much thank you indra sir